Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Muhammad's Boom Boom Room, where all of my guests either agree with me completely or they go boom. I am your host, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon me. And with me now is one of the greatest theoretical physicists of all time, Stephen Hawking. Professor Hawking, so glad you could roll into the studio this evening. Thank you for having me, Muhammad. Mankind's greatest achievements have come about by talking and its greatest failures by not talking. If you and I can have a peaceful conversation, then there is hope for the future. Alhamdulillah! This is why I invite people from all perspectives to join me on my show, so I can give them the opportunity to agree with me. As a gesture of friendship, I would like to send you a free copy of A Brief History of Time. Why would you send me a book? When as everyone knows, I can't read! We are all different, but we share the same human spirit. Well said! Or should I say, well synthesized? So, tell us about yourself. All my life, I have been fascinated by the big questions that face us and have tried to find scientific answers to them. My goal is simple. It is a complete understanding of the universe, why it is as it is, and why it exists at all. Well, if you want to understand the universe, you've come to the right place, because the great God Allah has revealed to me the secrets of the cosmos. Wonderful. Let us discuss gravitational singularity theorems, cosmological inflation, Euclidean quantum gravity, and the black hole information paradox. Cosmological peril, what now? Oh, I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves, Dr. Hawking. We want to keep things simple for the sake of our viewers. Instead, allow me to recap what Al-Islam teaches about the universe. And then you can tell everyone how science has confirmed my revelations. It is your show. I am ready to be amazed. Well, towards the bottom of the universe is a giant fish or well. Sometimes that fish or well gets agitated. And this is what causes earthquakes. On the back of the giant sea creature are seven earths, all of which are flat. They're stacked up like pita breads, except that there's a 500 year journey in between each one of them. We live on the top earth, which again is flat. The sun and the moon chase each other around the earth, much like Aisha and myself, but they can never catch each other. The sun sets in a muddy pool somewhere out west. There are people who live near the pool. They can tell you all about the pool. Above us, in the lowest heaven, are the stars, which are missiles that Allah uses to shoot demons when they try to sneak into paradise to hear his scheming. When you see a shooting star, it's because Allah became angry and hurled a star at a demon. Above the stars are seven huge domes that enclose the seven heavens. Each of these domes is solid and would fall on us if Allah didn't hold it up by his mighty power. Above the seven solid domes is a large sea, which is as deep as one of the heavens. Above the sea are eight mountain goats. They're giants, which are all as tall as one of the heavens. And above the goats is the throne of Allah. Now, do you see why Muslim apologists claim that science proves my religion is true? How could I have known all these facts about the universe apart from divine revelation? Oh, I thought you were joking. I never joke about the great god, Allah. Muhammad, if I were to summon all of my brain power in order to invent the most ridiculous universe anyone could ever imagine, my imaginary universe would still be more like the real universe than anything you just said. Everything you could possibly get wrong, you got wrong. That seems to be some sort of record. I think your speech synthesizer 
must be malfunctioning. Unlike my button, which never malfunctions. Because you're starting to sound like a crazy person. The thing about smart people is that they seem like crazy people to dumb people. Peace be upon me! I do sound crazy to dumb people. That's why Allah always has to remind me that I'm not crazy. But smart people are amazed that my scientific revelations all turned out to be true. Muslim Dabba books, which I can't read, are filled with proof that Western scientists agree with my revelations. Yes, I read an article about that in the Wall Street Journal. A Muslim organization affiliated with Osama bin Laden gave Western scientists free vacations for them and their wives, first-class plane tickets, four-star hotel rooms, banquets with heads of state, expensive gifts, and cash. All for sitting down and saying something nice about your absurd scientific claims. Peace be upon me! That's how you know my revelations are true. The evidence proves that if my followers shower scientists with money and gifts, some of them will say something positive about my revelations. One of the scientists who fell for this called it mutual manipulation. Alhamdulillah! Yes! Mutual manipulation! We manipulate scientists into telling the truth about the Quran. And you think that is how science is done? Giving scientists money and vacations and pressuring them to reciprocate by saying that you made an accurate statement? No wonder the Islamic world dominates all branches of science. By the way, that last part was sarcasm. Professor Hawking, I really cannot understand why someone would disagree with Allah's view of the universe unless he's just a racist against religion. There is a fundamental difference between religion, which is based on authority, and science, which is based on observation and reason. Science will win, because it works. I will win by slashing the tires on your wheelchair! What happens when you die and face Allah? Is science going to save you? I imagine what happens to human consciousness when we die is much like turning off a computer. I do not believe in a heaven for computers. I think the afterlife is a fairy story for people afraid of the dark. Fairy story? You sound like the pagans of Mecca who always call my revelations fables. Listen, you're sitting, not standing, in the presence of a prophet who's been sent to tell you about the afterlife. But you reject my signs? Even my giant moor? You reject all of the signs that the great God Allah has given you! The human race is just a chemical scam on a moderate-sized planet orbiting around a very average star in the outer suburb of one among a hundred billion galaxies. We are so insignificant that I can't believe the whole universe exists for our benefit. The human race is chemical scum? I call Jews and Christians the worst of creatures and everyone throws a hissy fit. But here you are calling all of humanity chemical scum. If we're all just chemical scum and dying is like turning off a computer, then who cares? about science, hmm? We are just an advanced breed of monkeys on a minor planet of a very average star. But we can understand the universe. That makes us something very special. Special for what? Special chemical scum who will eventually be turned off like computers? Professor Hawking, don't you see? On some level, you know that we're more than chemical scum. You know that our consciousness is more than a computer program. You're living a kind of double life, pointing out what we are according to your worldview, but assuming all along that we're much more than that. Life would be tragic if it were not funny. Funny? Do you enjoy stand-up?
If your claims are correct, life is tragic whether it's funny or not. You've been confined to a wheelchair for decades thinking about the universe. People come to you like you're some sort of guru and your brilliant insight is that even though we're meaningless scum, we're still special? Do you even hear the words coming out of your speech synthesizer right now? Although I cannot move and I have to speak through a computer, in my mind I am free. Free to do what? Don't you believe that all your thoughts are just chemicals sloshing around in your brain? Why are the chemicals sloshing around in your brain somehow more true than the chemicals sloshing around in my brain? You make me want to test gravity by taking you up to the top of a hill and giving you a good shove. The human failing I would most like to correct this aggression. Not your legs? Peace be upon you. Please let me finish. The human failing I would most like to correct this aggression. It may have had survival advantage in caveman days to get more food, territory, or a partner with whom to reproduce, but now it threatens to destroy us all. Aggression doesn't threaten to destroy us all. It only threatens to destroy you and anyone else who disagrees with me. But it doesn't matter, because you're all just chemical scum, right? While there is life, there is hope. Wrong! While there's life, there is... I don't like more! I am getting a revelation from the great God Allah! Do not like this video, do not share this video, and do not under any circumstances subscribe to this channel! I